Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is How to Make Game in Unity, and welcome to episode 45. So in this episode, we are going to get our chest working, i.e. when we walk up to our chest, we'll be able to open it, rather than just kind of open it magically. And uh, we'll also look at an animated splash screen, as well as a little bit more on scene linking. So, the chest. Now, the great thing about this chest is that all the work we've pretty much done already. If you remember a while ago, we created this script in um, JavaScript it was actually. Uh, we can actually already use what we've written here to open this chest. And all we're going to do to make things that little bit easier is hold control and press D on that cave open door script. So we duplicate it. And we're just going to call it something relevant to what we're doing. In this case, it's chest open and open it up in Visual Studio. So, as I said, because we've already written this code, why should we write it all over again? It's real simple. And this object obviously refers to whatever object uh, that this is going to be attached to, i.e. it's going to be a cube all the way around the treasure chest. So we'll disable that, that's fine. We can get rid of the key variable because we don't need that, there is no key. So we can get rid of both of those. And we can get rid of creak sound for now, that's not important. So really, all we need from this is this object, which is going to be the cube itself. And we're still gonna keep this as door swing, or should we rename it? Should we rename it? Let's rename it. So instead of having door swing, let's have this as chest swing. So once again, this will relate to here. Chest swing and chest swing. Written swing twice there. And save the script. Uh, if you want this as the C-sharp version, then I will add this to the, to the actual script that you can download on the website, just converted to C Sharp. Because uh, I, I know that right now, JavaScript isn't massively supported. However, if you go right click and create and down here legacy, you'll be able to find Unity script right there. So the idea of what we've done up to this point is there's not many episodes left in this series. So... Uh, we created or started creating another one, which is an ultimate one, which is probably much better than this one, but this is a great starting point. Anyway, I'm going away from the point here. Uh, we have this and we need to find the actual name of this object. So if we go to our chest and we have, if I can find it, pivot point, we need to set that to play automatically. And what we'll do, is we'll have animation dot enabled equals true. And once again here, we'll have animation dot enabled equals false and save that script. So like I said, the idea of what we've done here, let's just turn that off. So what we're doing is we're just activating this animation. That's all we're doing for this. So like I say, we've already written this code, so there's no point in duplicating the code. So now let's get this working. So, game object, 3D object, cube, and we surround the entire chest with this cube. So let's scale this to 2 by 2 by probably 3, I would think. And let's just fit it around the treasure chest. So, about there, maybe a little bit bigger on this one. So 2.5 and 2.5. There we go. That should do the trick. And turn off Mesh Renderer. And let's attach the chest open to that cube. And let's rename our cube to chest trigger. And then obviously chest uh, trigger is going to be this object. And chest swing is going to be our pivot point right there. So now let's press play, <coughs> excuse me, and check out this in action. If Unity decides to load sometime today, Unity. Okay, so let's try this out. Oops, I turned Where myself are? around. <laughs> I need to find a way out of this wood. Oh, we missed it. 
we missed it. So yeah, I, uh, I'm hoping this works quite nicely. It should do. So we should be able to go over to our chest, even though it's a little bit big. Ah, okay, so it didn't work as we expect. Uh, let me bring our player a bit closer so we can actually see this in action. So let's bring our first person controller over this way. We don't need to go through that rigmarole of all this again. And let's rotate uh, by in fact, minus 90 so we can see the chest straight away. And now let's see. So the chest just kind of opens now. Where am I? It's up to you whether you want to animate it or actually animate it at this point. What do you know what, guys? I um I, I think I'm actually gonna rewrite this in C sharp because I think it's the wrong thing to do the way we've done it. Not wrong as in it is wrong to do it this way, but I I think we probably should. let's do a C sharp equivalent. So let's create a C sharp script. And let's just call it chest opening. <clears throat> And open that script and we can use pretty much the same kind of um, scripting that we already have if I can find original script so what I'm gonna do is we'll use the same variables so chest swing and this object so C sharp public and game object chest swing public game object and this object and already you can see how similar these actually are and what we need to do is we need to have void on mouse down in this case void on mouse down up close bracket doesn't need to be private and yeah as I was saying you can already see the similarities between the two so for those of you who struggle with actually getting to grips with Unity itself and converting C Sharp and JavaScript, this is a great way of doing it because we can see um, JavaScript is a little bit longer than what we actually need because really we can paste that here and yes, this isn't going to be right. However, we don't really need to wait for seconds. We could literally just have this object dot get component, spiky brackets, animation, dot play and in brackets and quote sorry in brackets and quotes we need to put the name of our animation which is chest pivot and semicolon and obviously this needs to be changed to this object and oh close bracket there and save so yes what I'll do is I'll put both of these scripts in the same script on the website for you to download. You've got your JavaScript version if you want to go with that. And we have the C sharp version if you want to go with that. I would recommend the C sharp version. So save and let's head back to Unity. Let's have the chest trigger. I'm going to remove the JavaScript one. And I'm going to attach the uh, C sharp version. Chest trigger is going to be this object and obviously pivot point is going to be chest swing and as I say because this we've done this a bit differently in C sharp we can reactivate the animation and untick play automatically so now we press play so we've done this two different ways it's up to you which way you want to use so let's where am I hopefully I click. need to find a way out of this wood and it's not doing it as expected so it helps if we actually do this right I think because we have a, an error here. There is no animation attached to chest trigger. That is because, Jimmy, you have done something a bit silly. You have put this object dot get component and it should be chest swing dot get component. Oh, Jimmy, you're getting terrible in your old age. So the idea of what we've done there is just, I, I've put the wrong variable to enable the animation, but either way, there we go. That's how we can do that. Where am I? So that was my fault. That was completely need... my fault. I put this object dot get component when it should be chest swing. So as I say, both will be on the website. 
Now, let's take a look at an animated splash screen. Now, splash screens are where you can display your studio name or any other information. So let's go to, in fact, let's save that scene. And let's go to File, and let's go to New Scene. And I'm going to make this fairly simple. I'm not going to make this too drastic. I'm going to go to Game Object, UI, Raw Image, and I'm going to have it black all the way across. So we need to anchor and stretch and change it to black. Zero all the positions, so it makes it full screen. So let's double click. Excellent. And now what we're going to do is bring in a texture for JV Game Studios, basically. So drag and drop into there. And what we can do is Game Object, UI, Raw Image, and basically have that as the texture. And we'll have that center screen, dead center. Let's have it the right way. So let's bring our cursor this way. Height I'll have as 200. Width I'll have as 400, maybe 500. Press play. Excellent, there's my splash screen. In fact, I think I want that as 600. <laughs> That's better. So now let's animate it. Let's make it a little bit more lively, not just plain and boring. <clears throat> so I'm going to start with going to my animation folder and renaming the actual object itself to JV logo. You can have it whatever logo you would want, call it whatever you want. And I'm going to start by rotating the actual um, piece by 90 degrees, I think, on the Y. Is 90 right? Because I want it to swing outwards, so yeah. If you rotate it by 90 and press play, although we can see it in the scene view, we can't see it in the game view. So I'm going to rotate it by 90 degrees in animation. So let's make sure we have this selected. Animation down here. Let's click on Create, and then let's click on, what should we call it? Splash Anim. Save it. Press record. And let's set the first keyframe. And ideally, because we're only using the rotation, let's set the keyframe here, rotation, by retyping 90. Hit enter. And we'll rotate this over half a second, maybe. So 30th frame. So by the 30th frame, we want it to be zero. So we can fully see it. And then let's stop that recording. Back to project and click on splash anim. And let's go to, in fact, let's untick loop time. So it only plays once. We don't really need to change it to animation. There's, there's no point really, because it's only going to be on our screens for a couple of seconds. So let's press play. That'll do, just fine. We could also slow the animation, I guess. So if we go to animation and let's have, let's, in fact, let me select the actual image itself, animation, press record. And what I'll do is for the first half a second, let's have no change. So let's set it back to 90. And then over the course of the next second, so we'll add 60 frames to it. So it's 90, then we'll rotate to zero. So we shouldn't really see much go on between here and here, which is the first half a second, because when I press play then it looked like it kind of jumped into it rather than just kind of wait till we've loaded and then do it. So let's press the record to stop. Let's press play and check out how this looks. Perfect. I like how that is. So it's up to you how you want to use the animation. If indeed you want to animate at all, it's, there's no yes or no about it. You could just kind of do that. So. Last thing we're going to do is scene linking. So if we go to file and build settings, you remember that we have the title screen as zero and area as number one. So I'm going to click on add open scenes here. It prompts us to save our scene and we'll call this splash screen. And that's added as number two. Now, ideally, we want this to be the first scene to load rather than the title screen. So let's drag splash screen up to the top. Now, what this does mean is that our linking is now going to be off. So if we go to our title screen and try playing our game, it will take us back to the title screen because originally that script was taking us to scene number one. So let's sort all of this linking out now. If we go to our scripts down here, 
let's right click and create a C Sharp script, which will allow us to go to our title screen from our splash screen. Let's call this splash to title. And in here, it's going to be fairly simple. On void start, in fact, we'll get rid of void update and any annotations. We need to basically start a coroutine. So start co routine and in brackets we can call this routine anything we want so let's call it uh, Jimmy to menu open close bracket close bracket semicolon and I'm, I can't quite remember if we've used I enumerators in this series because it's gone on that long but we're going to use an I enumerator and it's going to be called Jimmy to menu just like we have up above so open curly bracket and what this means is that we can now use the yield return new wait for seconds and in brackets how long we want to wait in this case let's wait for four seconds and then after four seconds we want to go to our main menu but in doing so we need to declare that in the namespace because we're using scene management so using unity engine dot scene management semicolon which subsequently means that we can go scene manager dot load scene and in brackets one because number one is our title screen so save that script head back to unity and we need to go to game object create empty and then drag and drop splash to title right there and save that scene and before we go any further let's sort our linking out on the title screen so let's go in there and if you remember we have in the canvas we have a button here this button leads to title button new so that one and here load and new and we just need to change here application dot load level change that to in fact we'll change that to two and we'll change new game to two as well. So that is our linking fixed. So let's try this whole sequence of events out and see how we go. Uh, splash screen right there and press play. So far so good. Awesome. Now, new game. We should load into our game. There we go. Excellent. So that is our linking pretty much Where done. Where am I? So next time we are going to take a look at creating a credit scene. Uh, we'll look at more UI to say, for example, we got so many gold or something out of the chest. So until that next episode, guys, you work on your uh, linking, you work on your splash screen, and I will see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.